What's up, y'all? I got a banger from men only. Let's get straight into it. Got a question for the men out there, and please, for the love of God, don't get offended because I don't mean any harm by it. I don't mean any harm by it. So many men, many men wish death upon me. No, um, so many men say that they're scared of women. Okay? Chad, let me know. Are y'all scared of women? <laughs> I'm going to keep it a bug. I don't think any of us are scared of women, bro. So many wet men say this. I've heard this. I've heard this to me about situations. What does this mean? What do men mean when they say they are scared of women? Are you actually scared of women or are you scared of approaching them? Like, why are we scared? Like, I'm here to answer the questions that you need to have answered in the comments. I will 100% give you the honest truth about a woman or a situation that you need prevailing. Think of it as an agony aunt situation, darling. I will help, okay? Phoebe to the rescue, Phoebe to the rescue. But seriously, why are we scared of women? Please help me answer that question and I will answer any questions that you have. Because why are we scared? We're just petite little flowers that need a bit of love. Here's the thing. I don't think men are scared of women. I think men are more annoyed. And they're kind of just over it. Dealing with the childishness, the egotistical nature of them, you know, the shaming, the insults, the guilt, the need to be right. I just think men are kind of over it. But Chad, let me know what you think. Like, are you scared of women? I don't think we're scared of women. I don't think we're scared at all. I think we're just more kind of over it and annoyed. That's that's what I think. About how my ex-boyfriend from high school and I officially broke up. Now it's tragic. So buckle up. It all started the summer before senior year. Love it when a woman tells her about <laughs> It's the best. It's the best. Of high school, when I started dating a guy who I knew was a fuckboy, he was the star football player, big in the popular group, everybody loved him, everybody wanted him, everyone wanted to be him. So I was up for the challenge. I'm gonna make this man mine. And I did, and we started dating right when school started. Now I view high school loves two ways. You can either have your high school love turn into your high school sweetheart, get married and live your long happy life, or it can be the worst possible dating experience you've ever had in your entire fucking life. Now because I fell in love, I thought, what better way to seal the love than to seal it with sex? 17 year old me, silly girl. But before the sex, I She's the village bicycle. Everyone's had a ride. Said, I need you to get an STD check because I heard you've been fucking around with the girls around town and I don't trust your weed. Yeah, if he's good enough for you, he's probably good enough for a few, honey. Duh. He said, that's fine. My mom's a nurse. I'll get an STD check. No problem. So a few days later, he tells me I'm clean. We're good to go. We can do the deed. We can seal the deal here. And I was like, okay, great. And I said, we're still going to use condoms though. And he said, the fuck? We're not. Because He's like, I'm calling bareback, honey. What are you talking about? I'm the QB. I can't feel your JJ on my wee wee with that. And I said, what? If you're listening, mom, my, I'm sorry. You raised me right, but unfortunately we still uh, use- I don't know about all that. The pull out method. Now, if you remember, my biggest concern here was STDs and I was not wanting to walk around with an STD and I did not. Until one day in dance class, I looked down at my legs and I realized I have a rash going down from my JJ to my legs. This man gave me chlamydia. The man that I lost my virginity to gave me chlamydia. The man that I- Brutal. Had sex for for the first time gave me chlamydia. I never thought that I could be mid in my life. I never thought I could be mid anything, but chlamydia, here we are. Devastating, I know, but guess what? It's curable. Thank God. The relationship was treacherous. I had later come to find out that he was sleeping with girls in my high school. More specifically, he was sleeping with a friend of mine. So when I found out that this said friend had slept with my boyfriend, I freaked out. She came to the lunch table and I said, you can't sit with us. I literally had a mean girls moment. You can't sit with us. And she said, Aubrey, I invited you to sit here. My face got so red. I was like, mm, you can't sit with us. And my friend Teresa pulled my arm, grabbed me outside and said, Aubrey, don't do this here. And I wouldn't be like, Teresa, you were literally on the news two weeks ago for having high school fights. What do you mean? But I didn't. I said, you know what, Teresa, you're right. It's not worth it. This is stupid. And stupid it was. And stupid I was. Because guess what? I got back together with him and we continued fighting for the entire rest of senior year. We even went on senior trip and had like a big, huge argument that all of our friends saw. And it was terrible and embarrassing and awkward. Stupid. But then even after senior trip, we got back together. I was in love. I was in lust. I was stupid. obsessed. I wanted this man and I wanted to show him why he needed me, but it didn't work. But how did we officially break up? Let me tell you, this is what you need to know. I'm driving over to his house after senior trip to have a nice day with him, to have a nice summer day with him. And I get there and he says to me, Aubrey, I don't want to be with you anymore. 
I was like, what? <laughs> the fuck did you just say? And he said, I don't want to be with you anymore. And my, what the fuck did you just say? What from, what, what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> no. He said, I'm sorry. I, this, this isn't working for me. I don't want to be with you anymore. I was like, just like that. I started begging. I started getting on my knees, pleading. What is it going to take for us to be together? Because I fucking love you. And it was nothing, nothing. There was nothing in that I could do. Or so I thought. This man says, you know what? There is something you can do. Do me one condition. I want you to go to Chick-fil-A and I want you to get me a sandwich, chicken nuggets, waffle fries, and a shake. And I want you to come back and then we can be together and everything will be fine. I literally was like, okay, that's so easy. I can go there right now. I'll be right back. So I drive up to the Chick-fil-A drive-thru and I'm like, hi. Um, okay, dumb, so bro. I'm really excited because my boyfriend said he'll want to be with me if I get him these four things. I get his order, bag is secured. I drive back to his place and he's having the best time eating it. And he goes, mm, that was really good. But you know, I still don't want to be with you. If the devil existed. <laughs> what a king, bro. That's good. But wait, there's more. He was inside me that day because I literally got up, got to my car, fully possessed with anger, could not move, could not breathe, could not think, did not do anything. I literally was like, <laughs> I went home and I put a fucking curse on that motherfucker. Here's the thing. I wonder why he left her. I'll, I'll keep it a buck. Like superficially, she's kind of cooking. She looks, she's got a pretty good face card. She looks like she's in shape. But she is absolutely crazy. This woman got some problems upstairs. Like, she need to go to therapy. There's something wrong with her. Like, the, the manic, like... Now, when I'm reacting to stuff, I know I'll be off the wall sometimes. But this, this feels like it's probably her. And when girls have personalities like this, I'm like, what is going on, bro? It's kind of scary, to be honest with you. I personally think dating apps should only be for people who actually want to date. Get off if you don't want to date. I feel like Tinder is kind of known as the hookup app. So, okay, sure, you can go on there, but get off I love it. it, makes a rule, and then immediately, immediately, in the same breath, is like, well, there's an exception. <laughs> no, make a rule, draw your line in the sand. Hinge, Hinge is for dating. Don't go on there. I told y'all that. I, said, I think I said that in a previous episode. Hinge is for dating, Tinder's for hookups, and on Bumble, you can find a feminist. <laughs> you just want to hook up or find someone to Snapchat back and forth with. Get off, respectfully. Or someone says that they're looking for a long-term relationship, but then they either literally don't respond when you're like trying to get to know them or plan a date, or- I'm sorry, I just keep thinking about The Undertaker with that jacket, bro. They ask for your Snapchat. A grown-ass man should not be asking. Let me get that snap, baby. What's your snap score, baby? Asking for my Snapchat. I love finding Michael, 27, unemployed, who's looking for short-term fun. Like, respectfully, Michael, respectfully, I think you're a little too old for that. Like, why would you not want a relationship? And he lives in his mom's basement, and he doesn't have a car either, so you have to pick him up, and then, unfortunately, on the date, he's going to have forgotten his wallet. Um, but Dang. just short-term fun, not looking for a relationship. No. Let's get real here. Wait. So you went on a date with this guy, even though he said he wanted short-term fun? I'm sorry, but that's dumb. Stupid. If a guy's telling you, I only want short-term fun, I'm not looking for anything serious. Bro, I would tell girls this all the time. I'm not looking for anything serious. I'm not looking for a relationship. I'm not, you know, I'm not looking for nothing serious. I just want to have fun. You tell women this all the time, and most of the time they actually are like, you know what, cool, I'm cool with it. Discussion on my single people, because I need to know what you guys would have done in the circumstance. They always say, like, you'll meet the person that you want to start dating or the person that you're with doing things that you love, whether it's going to the coffee shop, the gym, just your everyday activities, whatever. So okay. today I go into the coffee shop and the second I walk in, I see the most beautiful man, just like gorgeous features, brown hair, incredibly tall. I'm like, you are so my type to a T, very business-esque energy to him too. And I'm like, yeah, that's definitely my type. He's sitting across the cafe. I'm like, I should make some eye contact with him. Let him know there's a vibe here but um, didn't end up like looking at for my computer or whatever. So I'm like, I'll just have no earbuds in so I look approachable because I've been told I don't look approachable. So I'm trying to do everything I can to make myself look approachable this man. He ends up walking over and sitting right next to me. And how it's set up in this coffee shop is you, there's like one long booth and then a table in front of yourself and then a chair on the other side of you. So he's sitting right next to me in this booth and I'm like, perfect opportunity. So I'm patiently waiting for him to like spark up a conversation, but like, what would he have said? And I was too nervous to be bold and be like, hey, you're really hot. My name's Lauren. Here's my number. But like, 
I could have done that, but like that's a little too ballsy of me. And like I wanted him to just show a little confidence and maybe like pursue a little bit. But maybe you weren't his type. This is what I don't get with these women. They really do be thinking they are the prized cream of the crop. You might not have been his type. If a dude is that good looking, that handsome, tall, dark, handsome, business-esque, he's got options. Maybe you just weren't making the cut. And I feel like a lot of these modern women can't even fathom that a man wouldn't pick them. Because I think that's the most attractive thing in a guy. But I'm like, the fact that he got up and sat right next to me, he didn't even have to like charge his computer or anything because he didn't reach out to grab a charger. Because I'm like, oh wait, why did he move across and sit next to me? So that made me a little curious. So anyways, bummer. To make a long story short, we didn't end up having any conversation and he got up probably like, I don't know, 30 minutes later or something. But yeah, he totally distracted me from my work because I was like, I just want to kiss you on the lips. You are gorgeous, honey. But yeah, um, if you were sitting at shortwave coffee today next to me, you should have shot your shot because you were beautiful. But anyways, I want to know what you guys would have done that sort Here's the thing. Um, here's what uh, most adults would do. Why didn't you just talk to him? <sighs> this is the entitlement that a lot of these modern women have is they think they're too good to even strike up a casual conversation. Strike up a casual conversation with this guy. If you're so interested and he's ticking off all these boxes, pursue him. You know how many women don't do that? Ladies, if you really want a guy, pursue him just a little bit. You're going to be in the small minority of women that actually have pursued a man, and I almost biggity bet you, you could bag him. You'd be the legend of Bagger Vance. <laughs> if you could actually just talk to him. But a lot of these ladies are so scared and also so entitled that they're like, well, I want him to approach me. The thing is, you guys wanted equality, and most men would rather not approach you and miss out on the shame or the public humility and wait for you to approach them. I that I was dating yesterday, and it was not well received at all. For context, we've been on like two and a half dates. If you know, you know. Um, and I. She's a runner, she's a track star. What do you mean by that? I just, there were some key differences that I'm like, okay. Long term, this is not going to work for me. He was super religious. He was quite a bit older than me, had different priorities. I just knew it wasn't going to work. So rather... Really being super religious is like a red flag. I feel like that's a that's a great thing for an older guy. Chat, let me know what you think. I think it's a good thing if you're religious. Even if you're super religious, I think... Now, I think you can go overboard with it, but like having a religious man, a God-fearing man, I feel like that's a good thing. Other than ghosting him because I knew he really liked me, I just told him straight up, you know, you're such a great guy, but I just... I, it needs to end here. Like, I just don't see this going any further. And he was really upset with me. And again, after that many dates, like, I don't owe you anything. You should have known with the bull nose ring and the, no like, these nose rings are a telltale sign, buddy. You see this? Avoid it. Thing. I could have ghosted you. I could have whatever. But I gave you the courtesy of letting you know how I felt and I communicated it to you. And he came by to get his stuff and he, like, wouldn't look at me, <laughs> wouldn't talk to me. And, like, bro, like... Damn, like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's just not going to work. It's not going to work. Like, I'm looking for a husband, and I know that you're not him. You're not my man. God, I don't know. You can't win. Let's face it. I mean, you can win. I feel like your expectations are probably just too high, honey. You feel like you're worth you're worth everything, and, uh, you know, you're mid. That's what, it's, that's what I don't get. Us as men, I feel like we understand that. We see, we see the results that we get in the dating market, and we're like, all right, well, there's where I'm at. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a, I'm a six at best, and I've told you guys, chat, to rate me multiple times, and almost unanimously, it's like four, five, or six. I never get eight, nine, or ten. And that's okay. I'm cool with it. It's like I'm just partying every single weekend. And I'm going to have to party tomorrow, and then I'm going to have to party in two weeks from now. Here's the thing. He who findeth a partying every weekend. I, I just, <laughs> ladies, if you're partying all the time, no wonder you can't find a man. Men are going to these clubs. They're going to these bars looking for hookups, not a wife. Every guy knows that you don't find your wife at the club. Or, or am I an idiot? Stupid. And have been commenting on my post. Why can't you find a decent man? Lower your standards. One, it's not negative to have standards. I also don't even think standards is the right word. It's okay to have expectations of what you want your partner to be like. You might be of a certain religion. You might have a certain family value that's important to you. It doesn't mean that you can just walk into a bar 
and go up to someone and be like, oh, you're decent, you'll do, I'll, I'll procreate with you. If every woman thought like that, then the other 50% of males that are commenting on my post saying, your child's going to be traumatised if only has one parent, well, the kid's only going to have one parent anyway because the dad's going to fuck off at some point and they're going to be all alone. So make it. I don't buy that. And if you pick the wrong man, maybe, but um, I feel like most men have a level of integrity and honor. It makes sense. Here's the thing. Women are scared. I don't know. They just, they, they get with these men that say, hey, I don't want anything. I'm not looking for any relationship. And then they're like, well, why doesn't he want a relationship? Ah, you want a carrot? Free. Sit. Wait. Free. Go to your place. Let's jump into the subreddit, shall we? Let's jump into said subreddit, buddy boy. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, this is a clip from... These chicks are disrespectful, but he comes back. Okay, let's see. This is from Desex. Name, age, and what you do. My name is Megan McQueen. I'm 31, and I'm a comedian on YouTube. Okay. What are some activities you're into? Shit, I just like to work and self-develop, stay focused, stay out the way for real, and just help my niggas who help me, you know what I'm saying? Support me, and that's it. Just try to get back to the world in any way I can, you know? What are some qualities you like in your woman? Mm, number one is respect and, sub and submissiveness, for sure, before anything. What are some deal breakers? <laughs> if you're not submissive. I, I don't want no combative ass, argumentative ass. I don't want no, oh, yeah, I'm a self, I'm an I'm a independent woman. I don't need no man. I don't want none of that. You know what I'm saying? All right, look like we have a couple of pop balloons. Oh, yeah, don't fuck them now, ladies. Y'all got 27, and I'm artist. Um, and you ain't the point where I don't need no man, huh? That's what you is? Because you, when you pop your balloon, that shit hit. These baby girls kill it all. <laughs> and the thighs don't match. What is up with the BBL? Stop. Me and my yeah. nose, nigga, that shit pissed me <laughs> off a little bit. No, yeah. listen. Okay, not necessarily, but at the same time, like I feel like I give boss, and I'm very dominant. I don't give a fuck what you give. But I, but you. I give boss, and I'm very dominant. No, no man's gonna want that. You know what the thing is with me? I need somebody that knows how to tame me real good. So you have to. Are know you a how fucking no? Caged animal? Why the fuck yeah, I gotta tame you? I am a caged animal. That's a problem. You need therapy. No, okay? I've been to therapy. Niggas don't need to tame a woman. <laughs> we tame. We do. We do it so much. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. We don't need to tame women. That's the last thing we want to do. You know what I mean? Like we go out there, conquer the world, work on ourselves, go work on a trade, go make money, and we got to come home and tame you. Nah, I'm good. The next dude that I meet that don't want to take me out on a proper date, but big wants back. me to pull up. To his house, I'm robbing him. Oh, oh, shiver my timbers. Shut up, man. Yeah, yeah, I'm robbing him. I'm about to teach his ass a lesson about having strangers at your place of residence. Oh, dear, we are in trouble. Are you kidding me? You don't want to pay 20 bucks for my meal and get to know me a little bit, but you want me to come and chill at your house for the free? Well, more than likely, you've already done that. So yeah, that's what we expect, honey. <laughs> more than likely, you've already done it for another guy. So why would I expect to pay a higher price um, for something that another guy had to pay a discount rack price for? What are you even talking about, honey? Like, come on, dude. Look, is that carrot good? Oh my gosh. Oh man, she's going to town on that wild to me thank you guys so much we just hit a uh, hundred and i think we're at a hundred and five or six thousand subs thank you guys man really do appreciate you guys seriously sorry it's just his chewing is so loud in the background it's hard to even freaking concentrate but i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode don't forget to like comment subscribe go cop the ebook the four pillars of personality we've sold 70 copies 70 that's absolutely crazy to me we wrote this book just a few months ago so i really do appreciate you guys uh, become a member if you really enjoy the content so you can see private videos i think we have like 60 or 70 members so shout out to you guys but i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode don't forget to like comment subscribe and i will see you guys tomorrow man peace and that's the bottom line